This video is sponsored by Beef. It's what's for dinner on behalf of the Beef Checkoff. Korean barbecue is one of my all-time favorite things to eat. Two of the most popular and most common versions of it, at least here in America, are kalbi and bulgogi. And the main difference comes from the cuts of beef that are used, and we're gonna cover each one today. So let's just jump right into it. So the word kalbi literally translates to rib, and bulgogi translates to fire meat. So both of them are very similar and they both sort of refer to fire grilled meats, but kalbi traditionally uses short rib, and bulgogi usually uses a more tender cut like a ribeye, both using approximately the same marinade to drive its flavor. And that marinade is key. But before we jump into the marinade, we have to talk about the cuts. Now I've got three cuts of meat. Now for the kalbi, you've got two choices. You've got an English cut short rib. This is what we normally use for braises. You've seen this on the channel a lot. It's one full bone with the chunk of meat sitting on top of it. We can sort of shave thin slices off the bone for this to get nice thin slices of short rib to make our kalbi with. But then you've got what's called the flanken or the LA style cut, which is basically three of those English short ribs that are just cross cut. You're able to get this really thin piece of meat. Then you have bulgogi, which usually comes from the short rib. Oh geez, you know this happens from time to time. I meant to say ribeye, not short rib. My apologies. And now you could go to a great Asian market and buy all of these things fully prepped. I got the flanken from an Asian market and they have beautiful sliced ribeye that they're able to slice really thin on deli slicers that are specifically cut for Korean barbecue. But since not everybody has access to that, we're going to take English cut short ribs and a full ribeye and we're gonna cut them ourselves. But first it requires us to freeze them a little bit. And what I wanna make sure is with this ribeye, I've got a nice fat thick one. I wanna make sure it's nice and, and plump right? I don't want any indentions. We're going to put this in the freezer. So I want it to freeze nice and even so we can get nice thin cuts with a knife. And I'm going to do the same with the short ribs. These are going to go in the freezer for about two hours. That should be enough to solidify them enough to cut easily. We don't really have to do that with the flanken, but what you might want to do is run them through some cold water or a bowl of cold water because this cross cut's got a little bit of bone fragments if you feel them. Probably not ideal. You could probably get away with not doing this, but a good wash, which is something I don't often do with meat, might be required for this cut. These are going to go in the freezer. But if you want to learn more about different cuts of beef, visit beefitswhatsfordinner.com. The link's going to be down in the description. So into the freezer, this goes. I just rinse those guys under cold water, rinse that water out a few times, and then just dry them on some paper towel until we're ready to marinate. Now let's make the marinade. Generally, this marinade is the same, and you could actually use the exact same marinade for both the bulgogi and the kalbi. But because bulgogi uses a more tender cut of meat, you don't need to include either the Asian pear or the kiwi. You can, of course, add them if you want, but these two things, besides adding sweetness, have enzymes in them that help to tenderize the short rib. So in a lot of kalbi recipes, you'll definitely see either an Asian pear, a kiwi fruit, pineapple has a really strong enzyme that breaks down meat. If you have really thick cuts of meat that you're using, I throw a little pineapple in there because it'll really help tenderize it. Pineapple is so strong though that if you marinate too long, it'll turn the meat to mush. Kiwi has less of effect, still tenderizes, but less likely to make the meat mush. And Asian pear has a little bit less milder of effect than kiwi. Today I'm gonna use a little bit of kiwi, a little bit of Asian pear. If you were just making bulgogi, you don't need these ingredients, but of course you could add them and just maybe not marinate them as long. But today I'm gonna use the same marinade for both. So I'm gonna peel this Asian pear. If you don't have a blender, you can use a grater to kind of grate up all of this stuff so that it's a nice puree texture, which is just gonna be a better way for the meat to marinate. Thicker kind of purees will cling to the meat better than like a dice. I'm gonna do the same with the kiwi. I think kiwi gets a bad rap because it's got fuzzy brown skin. It's really underrated fruit. You can just get past the skin. You have this beautiful green fruit that's nice and sweet. Just gonna cut this guy up, add it to the blender. The thing about pineapple as well is that not only is it a more intense enzyme, it's a more intense flavor. So if you're somebody who might not really like the taste of pineapple, then I would stay away from using that. Gonna add one onion. A 
whole bunch of garlic cloves. These are huge, so I'm gonna use five, but probably add like eight regular sized cloves. Whole bunch of scallions. One cup of soy sauce. One cup of mirin, just a sweetened cooking wine. A couple of tablespoons of sesame oil. A few tablespoons of sesame seeds. A quarter cup of rice wine vinegar. One cup of brown sugar. Whiz it up. We want it to be nice and thick to coat the meat and it should have a nice, strong and delicious flavor. So you use about one and a half quarts of marinade. I might use most of this and I can freeze the rest so I can make another batch of this very easily. We're just gonna hold that off to the side till the meat's ready. First one to do is with this ribeye. That's a piece of bulgogi right there, so it's also gonna make a nice, stable place for me to cut. Now I think I actually, if you have a long knife, like a serrated knife right here, you could do this long strip, but I'm thinking about maybe cutting it in half like this so that you could just ease, more easily cut the steak. So let's just cut this in half. And if it's properly frozen, it should be really easy to do. Shaved steak. The closer you get to the end, the harder it is to get them thinner. If you find your pieces to be a little too thick, you can always pound them out with a mallet. Again, the pre-prepped Asian market slices are the best. We've got our shaved ribeye. That's perfect for our bulgogi. Now we can cut our short ribs. I'm gonna use a different knife. I'm gonna use this fillet knife for a bit more precision. Now I wanna get this layer of fat off the top. Shave this little piece off right here. So I'll shave this layer of fat. That slice is no good. And keep that fat too. That fat's really good stuff. Flip to the other side so I can get a better look at how much fat there is. Really slowly. Cut yourself a thin piece of short rib. You can cut them thicker. The thicker it is, the chewier it's gonna be. It's still gonna be good, but it all depends on how you like it. I like it a little bit more tender, so I wanna go as thin as I can. Now these bones have a weird sort of movement, so you kinda have to flip sometimes. The bone curves in, so you gotta be careful. Go real slow. Uh, this piece is a little too thick for me. You wanna go a little thinner than that. Thin it out with your hand. It's a little uneven. Carve out as much meat as I can off the bone. Save all this, of course. All sliced up. Before I throw it into this bag, I wanna make sure I get all the pieces coated. Now this really isn't essential, but I always take the meat out of the bag after marinating and find some pieces that just weren't marinated and it always just makes me mad. So I like to go through this step. And the boneless short rib, then the flanken. Just gonna top them all off with the rest of that marinade. Into the fridge for the night. This is gonna marinate overnight. And if you were just gonna do the bulgogi, you don't need to do overnight. You could just go a few hours and that should be good. But for the short ribs, I definitely like to go overnight for the cow bee and make sure it just breaks down a little bit. Tomorrow we head to my grilling station. Fast forward to the next day and we're out on the grill ready to set it up. Get a half chimney of charcoal lit and I've got a charcoal basket off to the side with some charcoals in it. And while that gets hot, we can go inside and get our meat ready. After marinating all night, the meat's kind of tangled up in the bag, so I like to kind of just take them out and organize them nicely so that we can place them neatly on the grill. Don't worry too much about the bulgogi though. The tangling of the bulgogi is kind of hard to avoid. The meat's ready for the grill. Now you wanna preheat the coals in the chimney to about 90% white hot, and then toss that into the charcoal basket. We wanna get all of the coals white hot, but we want them white hot right before we start to grill. And we wanna make sure there's enough fuel in there. So I'm gonna add a little bit more charcoal. Open up the vents on the bottom wide open. And once I can see the flames are no longer coming out of the top of the grill, we're ready to cook. 
Give the grill grates a quick clean, oil them up real quick, and then neatly place the meat directly over the flame. I'm starting with the flank and ribs. Make sure you get some long metal tongs too. These are gonna cook really fast, maybe two to three minutes a side, and they'll go from perfectly cooked to overly charred really quickly. So you wanna really stay on top of it. You wanna find the hot spots. And once you've got the meat browned on each side and cooked through, you wanna just get them onto a sheet tray to rest and just bang out the rest of the batches of meat. Then I throw on the short ribs we shaved. You cook those the same way as the flanken. If you've ever been to a Korean barbecue spot, I'm trying to cook it the same way I would at a Korean barbecue restaurant. Not trying to rush it, not doing too much at once, making sure each piece is as perfect as it can be. Now for the bulgogi, I have this cast iron grill pan, which is perfect for bulgogi on the grill. You can do this inside. Maybe we'll do a whole video on a bulgogi bowl later. But for now, we just wanna kinda get this in the grill pan, char it up real nice. If you cook this directly on the grill grate, it's probably all gonna fall through and you're gonna lose like 50% of it. Once you've got really deep browning starting to develop on the bulgogi and it's cooked through, get that into a bowl and your meat's all cooked. This is the short rib. Got tender. Now we can put together like a nice little Korean barbecue platter. Just got some sushi rice here. Got a link down in the description for the recipe. Just create a little mold there in the corner. Some nice bib lettuce. And I'm just gonna sort of just put my Korean barbecue onto the platter, separating the kalbi from the bulgogi with some kimchi. Finish up with some nice green onions and some sesame seed. If you got some samjang or some sesame leaf, that goes great too. To eat it, just throw together a little lettuce wrap. And I apologize for the audio you're about to hear. I forgot to plug in the mic. That's a perfect bite. And as you see, some nice, really thin pieces of the short rib, really tender. Even some of the ones we cut ourselves. But as you'll see, let's get a big fatter one here. So here's a fatter one, a little tougher. It eats almost like a skirt steak or a hanger steak. Still really delicious. So the thinner you go, the more tender it is. The thicker you go, the more texture there has. And the kimchi has a nice spice and some nice brightness. If you've never had Korean barbecue, you really must try it. It's a flavor you're gonna just fall in love with. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. If you want more beef recipes, we got plenty more where that came from. It's gonna be four videos on the screen right now for your viewing pleasure.